Hello, how are you doing? So we here in England over the month of November are in the midst of another lockdown, or it's not really a lockdown. I think that's just a kind of shorthand for saying that there are more restrictions, uh, more shops are shut and we're not supposed to mix and mingle with other people outside of our household and our bubble. And obviously this means that there is even more time at home again. And uh, this gives me an excuse uh, to get more books. So I have a whole group of new books, uh, some that I've bought, um, some that publishers have kindly sent me. So I'm going to talk through all of these new books that I'm eager to read and looking forward to and that I think are really interesting sounding. Uh, so first off, and uh, and because, you know, it's not all doom and gloom now over the weekend, there was really great news about the American election and the way it's turned out. And I'm so happy about that. Uh, it's such a relief, isn't it? And uh, so there's, an, to kind of celebrate, there's a novel called Rachel to the Rescue uh, by Eleanor Lipman, uh, which is about a woman who works at the White House, um, but who gets fired from her job there after she sends an email criticizing President Donald Trump. And as she is leaving the White House, or, or more accurately, as she's being escorted from the White House, she gets hit by a car um, that's being driven by um, someone who is described as a close friend to the president. So the novel follows her life after this and her recovery period and how she gets involved with maybe uh, bringing down the president and measures that are being taken to scrutinize his administration. Uh, or the question is, uh, will the president bring himself down through his own uh, bungled actions? And uh, yeah, I think this is meant to be quite a comic novel, but obviously a very timely one. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I just think this will be a really really uh, fun read, especially after the results of the recent election. The Swallowed Man by Edward Carey. I love the sound of this novel. Uh, this story is narrated from the perspective of Geppetto as he's trapped inside a whale and is reflecting on his life and his experiences creating Pinocchio. And uh, so this is quite a short novel, uh, much shorter than uh, Edward Carey's previous novel called Little, uh, which I never got around to reading, but I really wanted to. Um, it was very popular. Lots of people loved it. And I loved the sound of it, but I just never got around to it. But uh, I think I'll be able to manage this because, uh, yeah, it's only 140 pages long. And also there are some illustrations in it, um, some really look lovely looking illustrations of, uh, of uh, Pinocchio and, yeah, different scenes from uh, his life. And so, yeah, I, I think it's like sounds like quite a contemplative novel, but is obviously uh, tapping into this this classic fairy tale. The Last Days of Ellis Island by Gail Joss. Uh, this has a really beautiful cover and obviously Ellis Island was the famous point of entry in America uh, to many immigrants um, who moved to the country and uh, it's about a man who uh, worked as an officer in the Bureau of Immigration in Ellis Island and the story is about the final time before uh, this immigration office was finally shut down in the 1950s and he's reflecting back on his life and the many people he's seen come into the country. Um, so there's this larger issue, but it's also about his personal life over that time. So it sounds like a really great story. The Invisible Land by Hubert Mingarelli. Uh, this is another historical novel, uh, which is set in Germany during World War II, or at the very end of World War II, and the Allied forces are assessing the, the damage to the, the landscape and the country. And it focuses on the story of a war photographer um, who is uh, yeah, taking photos of, of this landscape and um, he takes a very special interest in it and wants to stay longer than he's, he's meant to to capture more photographs of the German people and travel throughout the, the countryside and he takes with him a, a driver um, who has his own reasons for, for wanting to uh, journey through the country and uh, so yeah it sounds like a very good story but also this is the author of the, the novel Four Soldiers, which was long listed for the Booker International Prize. And it's another quite short novel. Uh, this is only 130, 
85 pages long. So, so yeah, I don't think it'll take me that long to get through. What You Could Have Won by Rachel Genn. I love how the author describes that she wrote this novel because she wishes Amy Winehouse was still alive. Um, so the, the story is about a failing psychologist who helps uh, refashion his girlfriend into becoming a emerging pop singer and star. And as her fame begins to rise, um, she has an increasing dependence on uh, drugs and alcohol. And uh, and so, yeah, it's about the, the conflict of, of that. And I really like the sound of this. Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu. This is about a man named Willis Wu, who is an actor that often gets stuck playing the generic Asian guy in a cop TV drama that he appears in as an extra, and how he aspires to be uh, the kung fu guy. And it's it's a kind of uh, sort of moving, but also a comic novel looking at race and assimilation and popular culture. So yeah, it sounds really good. The Storm by Akeem Bologan. Uh, this is a really beautiful looking book, which is a collection of 13 short stories. And I'd really like to read some short stories in between uh, longer works over the, the course of November. And so this is looking at how people survive in a volatile landscape, how people deal with extreme crisis and how ordinary human relationships are distorted in uh, extreme conditions. Then I have a couple books of classic translated literature. Uh, so first off there is One Day of Life is Life by Joan Margal. And this is a writer uh, who was working at the end of the 1800s and the beginning of the 1900s in Spain. And he was writing about the current social and political issues of his time. And this is a collection of poetry as well as prose. And it's, I, I love how um, this press, Fum de Estampa Press, um, publishes his, uh, his work in the, the Catalan on one side of the page, but then on the other side of the page you get the English translation. So um, you can sort of see how uh, yeah, the, the language works and how it's been translated, which I think is really valuable. And I mean, obviously makes the book a lot longer, you know, than it would a, a normal translated book. But it's sort of valuable to see that even if you can't read the original language. Then I have a book from the Everyman's Library collection. And you know how I love the Everyman's Library books. And this is the Babur Nama. And this sounds like an amazing autobiography. It's about a man who is living at the uh, late 1400s and early 1500s. And he was actually a descendant of Genghis Khan and how he became the first Magar emperor and how he rose from quite like a, impoverished conditions to uh, this great political role. And uh, it's meant to be a, a classic piece of Islamic autobiography. And uh, yeah, it just sounds like such a fascinating story about his life, but also the uh, the politics and the society of the time. Next, I have a few books of nonfiction um, that I'm really excited about. So first off, there is the book, It's the End of the World, But What Are We Really Afraid Of? by Adam Roberts, uh, with this very loud cover. Um, and I know there's been lots of literature recently uh, uh, sort of about dystopias and and uh, a lot of new dystopian fiction. And this is a nonfiction book which looks at the question of why are we so obsessed with the end of the world? And, you know, is it from more existential questions about how we live in this uncontrollable environment and, you know, whether we really matter in this, you know, big, giant, uncaring universe? Or is it because of more, um, you know, questions to do with society and human beings seem sort of bent on their own destruction and creating war? Or is it about, you know, more personal questions about our own self-annihilation? And and uh, and so, yeah, he explores a number of different cases from, you know, sort of zombie ap apocalypses um, to environmental disasters and why we're so obsessed with these, these stories about the end of our world. So I think that sounds so fascinating. Not a Novel by Jenny Erpenbeck. And 
And I've been wanting to read more by this this writer. I've only read her novel Go Went Gone, uh, but this is actually a collection of her nonfiction from that I think she wrote over the past twenty five years or so. That's um, that are sort of reflections on her own personal life, but then also uh, writing about uh, literature and music um, and also wider society. Then I have a new book which I know I'm really gonna enjoy uh, reading over the winter months and probably reading aloud to my partner quite a lot and that is The Best of Me by David Sedaris. This is his collected works of or selected works of um, his funniest and most memorable uh, stories um, from various different books and uh, yeah I'm going to really enjoy revisiting some of these stories. I mean he's very biting and satirical and sometimes you know I think he tips over into too dark territory and I've, I've been slightly worried that his more recent work has been sort of grumbling old mannish um, sort of responses to, to things so I think it'll be more fun in a way to look back on some of his earlier works and, and reread some of that as well. I have a few books which are more kind of horror fiction or you know are stories about murder. Even though Halloween is over my partner and I have still been watching a lot of horror movies movies. I, I don't know why. It's just there's been there were so many that we wanted to get to and so we've still been watching more. Um, so first off there is These Women by Ivy Pachoda and this is a story about a serial killer but it's also about women who live on the margins of society and who are sort of forced into extreme taking extreme measures. Then I have a new anthology and if you watched my recent chat with Joyce Carol Oates, uh, if you watched it all the way to, to the end in the last 10 minutes uh, we discussed this anthology that she edited and uh, I don't blame you if you made, didn't make it all the way to the end because I know it was a very long talk but obviously I just revel in being able to talk with Joyce Carol Oates and uh, so yeah this is an anthology she edited which are noir stories by women and she discussed how um, her reasons for, for wanting to uh, edit this anthology and collect together these different works by um, many different really fascinating authors um, like it says on the cover of Margaret Atwood and Steph Cha and Edward Danicat and uh, Valerie Martin and yeah many other writers so um, I've read Joyce Carol Oates's short story in this collection but I've um, been wanting to get to the um, and the other pieces in it as well. Then I have a novel called Tender is the Flesh by Ostentina Baztarica. And so, you know, I've talked about how there's a lot of dystopian fiction lately. Well, this is another dystopian novel where the premise is that a disease spreads amongst uh, the livestock and animals in the world. Um, so uh, there is no more meat for people to eat. So it's a law is passed um, that humans can be consumed and it's about how there it becomes like a factory process where humans are prepared for consumption but they're not labeled as humans anymore because then they become food and so yeah it sounds very creepy and uh, and yeah quite spine tingling but if you're looking for a much more gentle story about murder uh, there's a newly reprinted book um, by Virago editions called Death Goes on Skis by Nancy Spain um, who is a writer that was writing around like the mid 1900s and who this is a sort of detective story um, where there are two female detectives who uh, go skiing on the Alps and uh, some murders occur and they try to find out what happens but it's meant to be very comical and fun and so I think a lot gentler, gentler more gentle than uh, you know this previous book I was talking about and finally I have a big group of classic novels by Anthony Trollope that the Trollope Society very kindly sent to me and you know I made a whole video recently about how I'm really excited uh, to get into reading the Chronicles of Barsetshire um, the series of six books that Anthony Trollope wrote and I've just read The Warden and I really really enjoyed it um, it was I, a lot of people sort of describe it as a kind of like dull and boring book but I just got so involved in it and just yeah it was such a pleasure to read so I'm very excited to read more from this series you know, especially the Barchester Towers um, novel, which uh, is the novel that the um, 
Trollope Society is having a big read on and that I'm going to join Alon in. And uh, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading more of his books. And I need to collect all six of the books from the series because I only have this and one of the other novels. Um, but then there's uh, a lot of people um, said that The Way We Live Now, they think, is a really great Anthony Trollope novel that's not connected to, or at least I don't think it's connected to any larger series. Um, it's just sort of an independent novel on its own, but it's also one of his quite long lawn books or, or his longer works uh, so yeah I'm really looking forward to, to reading more of these and I don't think I can collect all of his fiction because he wrote 47 novels so that would take up a lot of shelf space and you know a lot of my shelf space is being taken up by Joyce Carol Oates already so um, so I, I don't have all that much to spare but uh, so those are all the books that I want to talk about but let me know if you've read any of these or which you're interested in reading in the comments below as always I'll be really uh, interested to hear your thoughts about them and, and discuss them with you. But also, I'd love to hear about new books that you've acquired recently um, and that I should be looking out for. So thank you for watching. I'll speak to you again soon. Take care. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.